really, my parents wanted me to be a draftsman. They didn't want me to have anything to do with music. Although my father was um, played piano, and he introduced me to music, but um, uh, they wanted me to be a draftsman. It's a good, steady job, and I should study that. Well, in the 60s, I came down to London because I just had to get into music somehow. It was either music or it was movies. I w th these were the two things that, that ruled my life. Uh, I got a job with um, Polydor Records to begin with. Uh, that would be about 1964. I got it from, uh, I think, from one of the trade papers then, like Melody Maker or Musical Express. And I went along, had an interview, and got the job. And I went from there to Decca, and I was in the marketing department there for a while. The new acts uh, coming in, well, people like Tom Jones, Engelbert Humperdinck, um, The Fortunes, Moody Blues, people like that. They were the new acts. But um, there were other, other acts on the label. That, I mean, they had their stereo labels, uh, Phase 4, and uh, the, the stereo things where they sold albums, lots of albums. Matt Avani sold millions of albums. Um, and he wasn't anything to do with the, with the current scene at all. Well, I worked on everything, really, because you, you had a catalog to, to, um, to work on. So you worked on everything. Um, but it was, um, it was a wider market, and you had to sell a lot more records then to get in the charts than you do now. I got into freelance producing. Uh, somebody asked me to <coughs> attend a session to do a report on a session. And in this session, uh, there was something wrong, I felt, with the where the orchestra was heard. And uh, the arranger wasn't happy, and the producer didn't know what to do. And I just pointed out, I said, well, I think your lead trumpet isn't, isn't true. And then the, the arranger said, exactly. He said, you haven't got the full harmony there. Mm. So the arranger then said to me, um, you should be producing this. So I went from that into production. It was a, it was a slow, it was a, almost an overnight process. Pretty much the same then as it is now. That is to match the artist with the, with the materials and take an orchestra into the studio with the artist and put it down. Except they don't do it like that anymore. In those days, you would go in and everybody would do it all at one time. Uh, these days, uh, records are made with um, different tracks and uh, in cubicles, if you will. Uh, it's not possible these days to make a bad record because you have Pro Tools and you have all sorts of things that will split uh, syllables, split notes. Um, uh, you can, you can with, with the techniques, you can give a, an out tune singer a, a latitude of about a quarter of a tone in pitch and bring him on the pitch again. Um, in those days, the singer had to do it himself, had to be in tune. Mm -hmm. I remember the first LP, and that was um, Frank Sinatra's Songs for Young Lovers. Uh, and that was 1953. It was one of the early uh, LPs, concept LPs. And uh, I can remember bringing it home, and my parents said, what's this? Because it was in a, and I said, and how many songs? said so there's eight songs on Eight songs? Because they'd been used to 78s, you know, one on each side. And it was 33 and a third, the, the speed. And I'd bought a new radiogram that would take 33 and a third. And um, they said, what did you pay for? I said, 23 and a penny. They said, God, that's terrible. That's scandalous. Because you paid three and six for a, uh, you know, in the old money days then. And uh, so that was my introduction really to, um, to LPs.